There's it's no true, way Joe. you actually believe what you're Explorers saying. Explorers of Darkness has a better soundtrack. I am no, not it doesn't. say it again. Explorers of Time has you're the superior wrong, music. End of discussion. Wrong. Uh-uh. Guys, what are you arguing about? Don thinks the music of Explorers of Darkness is better than Explorers of Time, which is the most absurd thing I've heard all day. It figures Joe would like Explorers of Time better. He's been alive for more of it than anyone else. Guys, those games have the exact same soundtrack. Now, I have an idea. Assuming you both know more about these games than you appear to, let's rank every Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game. Okay, Barry. All right, let's do it. Sounds good. We'll start off with Red Rescue Team. This was the final Pokemon game to ever be released for Game Boy Advance, and it marks the start of a new spin-off series for the franchise. I absolutely adore this game, Barry. Instead of giving Pokemon orders, you are the Pokemon. And if that weren't enough, the soundtrack is chock full of bangers. There's not a single player who didn't feel the epic, foreboding atmosphere of the Mount Thunder theme as they climb to its peak. This is an A-tier game for me. Now just hold your horses, Joe. Oh, here we fucking go again. The remodeling of the team base arc is the least fun I've ever had in a Pokemon game. Yeah, keep revisiting Uproar Forest for a chance to find a chestnut to feed these incompetent apes. Oh, it's just a skill issue, So that they'll finally renovate your home. Except you're far more likely to run into a game-ending monster house that makes me want to launch my Game Boy Advance into the wall. Your cabinet was the only monster house I ever had a problem with. Real hysterical, Joe. The game is still bad. Wrong. It was a fantastic idea. Seamlessly interweaving Pokemon with the roguelike RPG genre only gave us more ways to enjoy an already thriving series. The story is better than any of the mainline games. It's impossible to describe the real sense of suspense and dread the Fugitive Arc imposes on the player. It's also refreshing to be able to play as all the different Pokemon themselves. And while combat is still turn-based, the battles take place in your immediate surroundings rather than in a separate encounter, making it almost feel like the action is happening in real time. It figures you clowns would have Gen 1 or takes on these games. Just like Gen 1, it's a weak start to the series. You have to wait for the formula to be refined before it's worth bothering with these games, ladies and gentlemen. I bet you had to have your team call for help in every dungeon, Don. Yeah, just like you call for help from your hospice care hospital bed, Joe. Oh no, where am I? How did I get here? You'll be asking that same question when you wake up naked on the floor of the prison showers with a black eye and a sore anus. Can we take it down a notch, guys? My bad, Barry. I really do love this game, though. I would put it in the A tier. D tier, easily. The game is too short. The dungeons are repetitive and get old after about 10 floors. Recruiting is weird, sometimes way too hard, as with legendaries, for instance. And the limit on how many party members you can bring with you is lame. I respect the effort put into this first entry, but I have to agree with Donald that the abundance of flaws drag this one down. My vote is B tier, but only because the narrative-driven style saves it. Next up is Blue Rescue Team. Now this is roughly the same game, but with a few notable differences. This one was designed for the Nintendo DS, and it takes advantage of the new features such as having a map on the second screen and stylus support. Furthermore, the sound design is noticeably different. Between these two games, you have essentially two different versions of the same soundtrack. What do you guys think? It's like you said, Barry, it's practically the same game. Put it right in front of Red Rescue yeah. Team. Yeah, I'm good with that. Excellent. Moving on. Now we have Explorers of Time and Darkness. The differences between these two are also negligible. We have a few items and Pokemon exclusive to each game. What are your takes, gentlemen? I'm just going to say it right now. These games have the best soundtrack in all of gaming. As much as I hate to credit anything that comes out of Donald's empty fucking head, that is a take with which I can fully get on board. It really is legendary, there can be no doubt. Between the zen masterpiece that you hear on the beach, the groovy brine cave bop, and the riveting fight to the Finnish musical mayhem while battling Dialga, there is not a single dull oral moment here. Now with that said, I think we better point out the obvious. The story here is overrated. You forgot to say you were capping. Unlike you, sleepyhead, I never forget. An elephant never forgets, fat ass. Shut the fuck up, Joe. Guys, please. Barry, could you stop playing mediator for a second and tell this illiterate hillbilly that this is peak narrative? I have to agree with Joe that this is as strong as stories get in the series, and it's a high bar. You guys are the most easily entertained apes. If you think a couple of those twists and betrayals are good writing, shut the fuck up, Joe. Can you explain your reasoning, Donald? A couple of inexperienced nobodies joins a guild and starts taking down hardened criminals with literally zero training. Sounds like your average American police officers to me. And what the fuck was up with the expedition to Fogbound Lake? You mean one of the most exciting parts of the game? I mean the fact that the guild enlisted every member to go rather than putting together a task force of elite guild members. 
It's just more of this participation trophy bullshit that is ruining America. Sounds like a good learning experience for the entire guild. Yeah, yeah, inclusivity, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, then there's the multiple examples of Deus Ex Machina, where the only thing driving the plot is the player character's random psychic dizzy spells. It isn't random, you fucking bonobo. The player can see visions of the past and future. It's literally a nod to the narrative motif of time. Dialga, the final boss, is the temporal Pokemon. Time gears are being stolen. Honestly, if I didn't already know you were this fucking dense... Yeah, no one's listening to your diatribe about the story in a children's game, Joe. You probably thought the Dusk Noir reveal was a good twist. Anyone who didn't see that coming a mile away should be committed. You probably spoiled it for yourself, Don. He was a mysterious figure when he appeared, but the fact everyone and their mother had heard of him as a legendary explorer muddied the waters a bit. It was perfectly reasonable to remain uncertain until we learned more about him. It was a well-earned plot twist due in no small part to Dusk Noir being a phenomenal character. Barry, you only like Dusk Noir because his name literally means black twice. Jesus Christ, Don! I'm gonna Don. pretend I didn't hear that. What? It's just an observation. I'm not racist. In fact, I'm the least racist person I know. So you know almost as many people as taxes you paid last year. Shut the fuck up, Joe. Okay, let's get to the vote. This game is S tier for me. Likewise. Best I can do is B tier. Let's not forget the procedurally generated dungeons get bland after a certain amount of time. Don, you have more hours in Skyrim than any other game on Steam. I don't want to hear you complain about procedurally generated dungeons. Okay, let's say it's the top of A tier. With that in mind, Explorers of Sky is an automatic S tier for the additional content, including new dungeons, music, and side stories. abso fucking lootly. I can't deny it does nothing except improve darkness and time. All right, our next game is Gates to Infinity, the first iteration on the 3DS. Ah, uh, yes, 3DS. In other words, the game is 3D and it belongs in S tier. I swear to God, I'm about to leave the call. Hold on, Joe. Let's hear him out. It's simple. This game has the best narrative in the series. You still have the classic tale of friendship between you and your partner. They don't want to alienate dedicated fans, but this is the only game in the series with a universal message, a fable, if you will. Oh, let me guess. Guns don't kill people. Joe, don't but start. The message is that negativity starts small, but once ignited, spreads like wildfire, self-kindling. Think about it. People are naturally attracted to negativity. In the fake news media, bad news sells faster. Or take a look at the average YouTube channel. I'll bet top 10 worst videos do a lot better than top 10 best. It's toxic. Poisonous. I knew there was a heart in there somewhere, Donald, but this is completely unexpected. Are you fucking kidding me, Donald? You honestly expect us to be touched by this cringe Marvel trope? Joe, weren't you the one sucking Dusk Noir off earlier? They made him evil because he looks like an evil character. In this game, they subvert expectations by sacrificing such superficial characterizations. Uh-oh, Don's reading out of the thesaurus again. Joe. At first, Muna appears to be a good character and Hydreigon bad, only to have the script flipped later on. The juxtaposition between characters' looks and personalities was brilliantly deceiving. And therein lies another lesson. Don't judge a book by its cover. I didn't know you had all this motivic rumination in you, Donald. I was going to give this game a C, but I feel compelled to move my vote to B on your argument alone. Now hold on just a fucking minute. All right, let's hear what grave remarks the Crypt Keeper has for us. First off, the narrative is fine, nothing special, and certainly not better than the first two games. Wrong. Second, there is a multitude of design decisions that are detrimental to the game. Didn't ask. You could take multiple jobs at once in previous titles, but now you can only take one slowing the game's pace to a crawl. Not listening. Further, there are only five playable characters, far fewer than ever before, and only 144 total Pokemon are even present in the game. Yeah, well, Vaporeon is in the game, enough said. Okay, you might have a point there, Don. Officer, I swear, I don't know these people. The final boss wasn't even a Pokemon, though. Which is an unexpected and interesting development. You could be describing an STD with that statement. They're raising the bar, Joe. The only bars you need to worry about are the ones you'll be behind. Okay, serious question. How are we still going to do these if Donald goes to prison? I'm not going to prison, you asshats. I'm innocent. Just like Hitler, I did nothing wrong. Right. Uh, okay. Anyway, I'm good with B tier. This is a below average game in the series and it belongs in D tier. There was hardly even a post game. Wrong again, Brandon. Put it in S, Barry. B is the median, so that's where it will go. This is criminally underrated. 
You would know all about being a criminal, wouldn't you? No one's been sentenced yet, but maybe you napped through that part. And if I belong in prison, you sure as hell do too for your fuck up with Afghanistan. Guys, let's be civil. And don't think I've forgotten about you, Barry. Shouldn't you be serving a sentence for arming ISIS? Ironic how you derided my strategy for taking down ISIS, and then ended up just arming more Syrian rebels and dropping more bombs than I ever did. The fuck I did? The fuck you did. I made ISIS was was. Uh, hey guys, uh, uh, come on now, l let's get back to the list. You're right. Thank you, Joe. I uh, don't know why I took the bait on that one. Uh, anyway, we now arrive to Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon. And it's almost like the Mario team was responsible for naming this one. New Super Ultra Pokemon Mega Mystery Dank XL Dungeon Deluxe DXHD Remaster. Their naming conventions are ridiculous to say the least. Indeed, but regardless, this is my favorite game in the series. Wait, we're not going to talk about both of them? Both of what? Oh, wait a minute. I'm not falling for that again. Don, you already know there's only one game, just like Gates to Infinity when they stop doing the matched pairs. Anyway, this is my favorite for several reasons. Your partner is the best written character in the entire series, for instance. Rather than being a Gary Stu, they have a distinctive, multi-dimensional personality. Also, the emphasis on strategic item use rather than move spam made for a unique experience. Finally, the game features an incredible soundtrack. Lush Forest and Foreboding Forest right at the beginning, both phenomenal pieces of music. Hold on, Barry, are we not going to talk about the broken-ass connection orb mechanic? You have access to a level 50 Salamence not far into the game, way above your team's current levels. On top of that, the job system is too linear, and you run out before long. That's because nobody wants to work anymore, Joe. Pedal your debunked nonsense all you want, Don. Look, Joe, any seasoned player will optimize the fun out of a game if given the chance. It's up to you whether you do it or not. Besides that, though, don't forget how you can visit the continents on which the previous three games are set. You can't even return to any old locations, though. They might as well have been completely unfamiliar continents we were visiting. True, but the towns placed in these continents were a treasure to explore. Plus, you saw some returning characters such as Swana from Gates and Corfish from Explorers. The way the writers connected these continents into one universe gave me a sense of awe, as though we had only cracked the surface on what could be discovered. I gotta go with Barry on this one. Super Mystery Dungeon definitely stepped up its game. The story doesn't employ any lazy time skips, and there are numerous dungeons to explore. I think I even found Joe in the Fossil Excavation Dungeon. Hilarious. Anyway, I think this is the weakest game in the series. It's F-tier for me. The story is weak. The gameplay being focused on items rather than moves means that your success relies too much on RNG, and the graphics didn't even improve much over Gates. I barely remember this game. I'm surprised you remember any of these games, Joe. I'm surprised you like this game, Don. Isn't it a bit too hard for you? I thought it'd be a bit too hard for Jill last night, too, but nope, she kept me nice and soft just as I expected. Yeah, I can't hear you. Guys. And blah, she blah, said, blah, Don, blah, are you blah, not blah, feeling blah, all right? Blah, blah, and I looked her blah, dead blah, in the blah, eye blah, and said, blah, skill blah. issue. Blah, and then blah, she got blah, up to make blah, me a sandwich, blah, and I blah, gave her a 20 blah, for it, blah, because blah, I don't need blah, a goddamn blah, handout blah, blah, like the rest blah, of you blah. commies. Yeah, all of that probably did happen, except it was with a guy named Putin. Come you on, take guys, that back. I will not. Okay. This one will go in right behind Gates. Finally, we come to Rescue Team DX for Nintendo Switch. This one is a remake of the original Red and Blue Rescue Team games. The watercolor art style was hideous. Shut the fuck up, Don. They were beautiful reimaginings of important scenes in the game. They were a bit jarring to the main art style of the game, but I thought it was an aesthetically cute approach. I didn't like it. No one asked. This game took the originals and made them way more approachable. There's an average difficulty level, but it really spikes up in the post game. Move sets have changed around, the graphics are gorgeous, and wherever the originals lacked polish, this remake picked up the slack, and I love the remade soundtrack. It's true, the music did slap. I think this is a solid contender for A tier. C tier? I agree, Barry put it in A. Sorry, Don, you've been overruled. I'm just glad the list is over. These spin-offs aren't that good anyway. IGN was right all along. Except for my beloved Gates, of course. Whatever you want to believe, Don. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. I'm going to go hang out with Candace. Candace? You mean like the ice gym leader from Sinnoh? No, no, the other Candace. The fuck, Barry? Are you cheating on Michelle? Who is Candace? Can this dick fit in your mouth, Joe? Got him! Oh, sure, that's real mature. You really are the grown-up here, Barry. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist, Joe. I could see you coming a mile away, Barry. I was just waiting for Joe to bite. I'm always the butt of the goddamn joke. All in good fun, my friend. All in good fun. Hey, are we going to talk about that piece of shit that was released as we wear? Not a chance, Donnie.